That's a lot. That's a lot of nitrogen. Get a watch the roof. Woo! Big stretch. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video. First thing is first, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button. And while you're down there, tap the little bell so that you get notified about any future videos. This video is gonna be slightly different to what it was supposed to be. My parents have been away and I was gonna do a bit of an overview of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, but my SD card decided to corrupt and I lost all of my videos. So I've had to get a new one and do something a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I've actually got to go and spray some beans for chocolate spot. I'm gonna to explain to you what it is. I'm gonna show you what it is and I'm gonna show you how we spray it. Hope you like it. But just a little bit about the sprayer. This sprayer is like a 1995, she's not new, she's not new, she's not young. It's a Gambetti bar. And I just thought I would show you how it works so that you get a bit of an idea if you don't know how a sprayer works. So essentially I have the tanker here, which is what I fill up with water out of the well. And then I have this pipe, the green pipe, which we then hook up to this fitting here and that will suck the water into the sprayer and it uses the pump on the sprayer from the PTO shaft which is underneath and then we fill up this hopper with the chemical and then turn the tap on and it will suck all the chemical into the big tank and mixes it all up ready to be sprayed and then what we do is we change all these settings on here and when we get into the field we can turn the PTO on again and the pump will then pump it out of these booms. The booms will fold out and yeah should all be well work. I have been sent all of my spraying wrecks by my agronomist and it's on an email. So on here, I don't know if you can see, but it tells me what I've got to spray and what chemicals to use and at what rate so that I can put them in the sprayer to the right rate and we're not gonna be spraying anything we shouldn't be spraying or spraying it too much. For example, this chocolate spot needs to be sprayed with half a litre to the hectare of Toledo and 0.6 of a litre to the hectare of Weaver. So that's what we've got to work out. That's what we've got to put in the tank and hopefully we'll fix the problem. <laughs> Those of you who follow me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever social media will know that this farm uh, practices regenerative agriculture. When you do practice regenerative agriculture, it isn't something that you can dive straight into. So using things like chemical and artificial inputs are something that we don't want to do. We want to wean our farm off of those. However, your farm is almost addicted to them. Your soils and your plants are addicted to those chemical and artificial inputs. So you can't go cold turkey. You have to slowly reduce those and slowly bring in the biological interventions in their replacement. So unfortunately, this is a spray that I don't want to do, but I have to do. chemical is run through the nozzles. Let's get spraying. When we're spraying, something I always carry, I always carry some spare nozzles, which I've got down there just in case we knock one off or something, a screwdriver to sort them out. And top tip, get yourself a little toothbrush because if you ever get a block nozzle, you can just pop it off and then get the toothbrush in there and clean it out. I have tried millions of things, um, but the toothbrush, toothbrush is the best. I have the queen of Folly Farm here with me today. Here she is. Not gonna lie, I'm pretty pleased with this crop of beans. Uh, these were direct drilled in probably end of March, beginning of April with the Claydon. Uh, they've had one spray for a herbicide for some grass weeds that were getting really bad. Uh, and they've had obviously no nitrogen as their legume. So those of you who don't know, because beans are legumous, crops you don't need to give them nitrogen they actually have nitrogen nodules on their roots they will sequester the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil and then leave it in the soil 
uh, ready for the following crop. So we'll follow these with, uh, with wheat. Hopefully that will give the wheat a good start. So why are we spraying these beans? Well, these beans have got chocolate spot and I just came out here because I wanted to show you what chocolate spot is. You might be able to see on the plant's leaf the little bits of chocolate spot. Now, we've just done one field and they weren't so bad, but this is a worse field. And you'll see just here what can happen. Now, that's nothing. If you left that untreated, those leaves would shrivel and that plant would essentially uh, become pretty redundant in the crop. The other thing is that if you don't tackle that chocolate spot, it will spread. So if we get a lot of wet weather, which is what we've had recently, that's what causes a lot of these fungal diseases. And unfortunately, that's why we're having to spray this crop. Well, beans are important to our rotation because they are a nitrogen fixing legume. Now a legume is a plant that um, will sequester atmospheric nitrogen of which there is 36,000 tons above every single acre. That's a lot, that's a lot of nitrogen. That nitrogen can then come available for the next crop. So when we plant the following crop, we can utilize that nitrogen and then reduce artificial nitrogen, which in turn gives you healthier soils and healthier plants. Good job, Scott Summary. Well, uh, I took out everything in this way by now. Woo! Another one done. Time for some lunch, I think. What do you say, B? Big stretch. Big stretch. I'm actually hoping that that'll be the last time I have to use this sprayer until the autumn, uh, which would be nice. That's one of the reasons why I was so disappointed about having to do this chocolate spot spraying. Just thought I'd put it in the shed for the last time and then like get it out again. Frustrating.